Okay, today I'm in Yorkshire and I'm looking at this part complete 10 unit development. Property is a high risk, high reward game. And the story behind this development is probably about a developer who started developing this plot out and about 70% through the build, they got into some trouble and the property is back with the bank and now it's back on the market. And we're looking to purchase this unit. Uh, this is a typical type of development we purchase. We look at distressed developments uh, before they go back to the bank or once they're actually with the bank. And I'm just gonna run you through the process of how you actually price up something like this because when it comes on the market, there's never a price necessarily stated on it. They expect a developer to come and look at the site and come up with a figure that they feel they're able to go in with. So the process is what I'm going to show you uh, and how we can arrive to an offer price we will put in for something like this. I know the snow is, you know, is coming down, but work doesn't stop. And uh, really, when you're looking at a development like this, the principles are the same as if you are looking at a one unit house. For some of you who are followers of this channel, go to the other properties and check how uh, we renovate smaller houses. So if you can do it with a small house, the principle is the same. You just have to apply those principles to every unit on the site and assess what does it need for it to be completed so if you can pan around with me you can see all of these different houses all of them are at different stages so my job as I do my appraisal today I will look at what each house needs and then how much we need to spend to be able to actually complete the development and bring it back on the market for us we would usually buy something like this do it up and then we will refinance it and let out all of the units and keep it within the portfolio for a number of years before we exit it maybe to an to a uh, to a bigger fund or maybe uh, to an institutional buyer as part of a bigger buyout so come on let me show you more how we approach um, a development like this so this is a 10 unit development of executive houses uh, the developer had managed to actually build the show house which uh, helps people who want to buy the other units to get a feel of what kind of finish they would have on any of the other units if they were to buy before they were completed so I'm gonna walk you through this unit and you can kind of get a sense of how it has great proportions it's really created for uh, for family um, and I think when you really look at the finishings they are decent and high quality finishings the space it is a spacious house uh, the only downside to these type of units I've noticed outside the gardens are very little you will literally do not really have a garden if you have a look out there it's more or less just an outside yard area so the problem with that for a house this big for someone to buy it they are looking at the outside space thinking that it might be too small for their kids and there's no grass so that's just a downside you might have to consider when you're looking to buy a unit like this but otherwise in terms of space there's a whole lot of space on the inside and I think it will lend itself very well to uh, an executive um, middle managers within the areas who are looking to to either move in and buy or move in and rent you have to break them down into individual plots and look at what's wrong with each unit and try to cost up the the money you need to put into it to repair it this unit looks pretty complete but as you can see from there this tends to happen with new builds you tend to have faults and issues within new builds like this that could be an issue with how the house was built or issues within the roof that are causing this uh, damp to come out so you gotta look out for things like that and make sure you take into account cost it up and make sure that you come to a right valuation of how much you need to spend to bring the unit up to date it is plowing down with snow man but you gotta keep on going man that's the job of a developer whatever the weather you gotta go out there and check out those properties and as you can see with this development they are two listed buildings which you also have to mind that when you are having listed buildings you can't just take them down a listed building means that whenever you're renovating it you have to follow specific guidelines you'll be provided by the local authority and this developer had this building 
building that they could not pull down. So they have to find a way to renovate it and keep its original features. This is probably one of the biggest jobs on the site. Uh, this house and the other one just down the, uh, down the other end, you, you're, you're probably going to spend most of your money trying to bring these up to date. There are quite a number of structural issues that you probably have to consider to, uh, in terms of your costing for this. When you are not sure uh, for something like this, you have to get maybe a, an architect or someone to do a survey so that you can be precise uh, with the number that you put to refurb something like this because you don't want to underestimate or maybe overestimate because you end up maybe cutting yourself out of a good deal because you overestimated or maybe you underestimated and then you buy it and then you find out hold on a minute I want to have to spend too much and then you end up in the same place like the first developer who found themselves in a sticky situation and you know what the bank will always come and get it if you don't know what you're doing get an expert who can give you a, a second opinion this uh unit as you can see is actually in shell condition uh we rarely really look at land and uh and building up from the ground uh most of the times this is as far as we would go we would take a building like this from a shell condition and then finish it up everything needs to be done in here the electricals the plumbing uh, you know the windows as well as the extension which is at the back which is part completed uh, so there's a lot of work to go in here so you have to be prepared to you know get your hands dirty to finish up this particular unit but in context of the development I think you are almost there uh, in terms of finishing it up in terms of the rest of the development but this is where most of your work is going to be as you can see uh, you know you need to put some staircase you need to literally uh, you know put a new floor a uh, lot of work but if you're willing to do this type of work there can be a lot of reward as well so we saw the show house the show house gave you an idea of what the finished product could look like this is one of the units which are part completed this unit I mean it has pretty much all the key elements in place but it needs a bit of painting uh, there is what's called the second fix electricals are not installed yet so that's all your fixtures and fittings if you look around you have all of these cables still hanging out as well as the need to actually install a heating system uh, so you have to also then look at all of those elements and cost them up because each unit has different things uh, some are much more complete than others some have flooring flooring and some don't so it's about really being rigorous in your process of looking at what is wrong with each development once you have done all of that you would then maybe look to put in an offer which is subject to surveys because it can be quite expensive to try to survey a development this big you know you're talking about 10 units as well as uh, a communal driveway uh, so for you to do that before you put an offer uh, it can be you know costly so what you want to do is look at all the things you can assess visually if there are things you can maybe speak to some of your colleagues who you work with if you have surveyors and other professionals they can give you a stare in terms of how much it cost and then you can get to a price uh, that you can offer through uh, the uh, explanation I'm going to give or how you get to uh, you know uh, cost up a development appraisal as well as arrive at a price point once you have done that put in that offer subject to surveys so that if anything comes up maybe it could be subsidency maybe it could be contaminated grounds you can then go back to the vendor and say the price that I have offered you has to now be adjusted in light of the new information that I have found and most likely if they are a developer um, they already know what is wrong with the grounds or the, what might be structurally wrong with the uh, with the development but sometimes maybe it like this one it already is with the bank and the bank themselves they might not know anything but then you bring it to their attention you renegotiate the price and hopefully you secure the deal this is another just element to show you how this unit is part complete you can see all the cables are still trailing uh, the kitchen is probably 
I would say 70% done. You have all the key elements in place. You probably need some of the appliances and I can notice there's no boiler. You know, that's another thing to look out for because some of these units will not have a boiler, but each boiler could cost you up to 3,000 pounds. That's an additional amount of money you, you might not account for if you're not looking properly because the radiators might be in, but the boiler might be taken out. So make a note with 10 units, 10 missing boilers, that's about 30,000 pounds. That's a lot of money to consider. Okay, so let's go upstairs and kind of have a look at what kind of finishing we have. As you see, there is no flooring, uh, so you'll need to install all the carpets. You have all the trailing cables. Just quickly look at into that. You can see the, the bathroom is uh, part complete. It seems like they had to leave the site abruptly when the bank repossessed it. Maybe there was a leak upstairs uh, in the loft. As you can see, someone was already opening and investigating what's happening out there. All in all, these are big, nice houses, big executive homes, and I think there will be buyers on the market for them. At the very least, you certainly will have some corporate rentals uh, as you have companies moving into the local areas. They're gonna need some accommodation for that stuff. Okay then, so once you have gone through each unit and you have costed how much it's going to cost you to redevelop and refurb each unit, it should give you an understanding of how much you have to put into a development like this. So how do you get into a price that you're going to be able to offer? You start off by getting the end value. What is the end value of each unit once it's done up to the standard that you are looking to get it uh, finished to? That will give you a guide of how much the whole development is going to be worth. Uh, but also consider if you have some flats as part of a development, do not forget to also value the freehold because the freehold is the plot of land uh, that is shared among the flats or the buildings that you are owning and that itself also has some value and once you have understand what is the end value by researching and comparing the values of other houses which have been sold in the area you will know how much you have to how much it will be worth and then once you also add uh, or rather subtract how much you have to spend uh, including your cost of finance as well as any closing fees such as stamp duty, your lawyer fees, you can start getting to a place where you can understand how much this plot of land will be worth or rather how much you are willing to pay for it. Because in development, there's never really a price for a plot of land. It's a question of how much are you willing to pay for that plot of land based on what you want to do with it and then it's up to the person who's receiving the offer to say they accept it or they decline it so that's the process in a nutshell but otherwise if you want to really understand the process I'll do a, di a different video on uh, development appraisals so that you can really get the nuts and crumbs of how you actually cost up and price up a development like this which is halfway done that's it for today I gotta go back inside man because I'm freezing cold out here but it's necessary if you're going to be getting those deals in whatever weather and whatever condition especially investing in the north this is the weather so i would say make sure you subscribe like the videos comment let me know what you want to learn and what you want to get more from these videos i will keep on bringing them to you so that you have a much more informed way of investing in property i'll see you next time